Okay, uh, uh, welcome to this week's uh, OCTF seminar. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome Plinio Sist, who is Director of the Research Unit on Forests and Societies at CIRAD in France, and, uh, and also uh, the coordinator of the Tropical Forest and Subtropical Silviculture Division at EUFRO. And he's a tropical forest ecologist with more than 25 years of experience in both South America and in Southeast East Asia. And he's also the coordinator of a really interesting inter uh, global network of tropical managed forests. Uh, uh, and uh, he'll be talking about that in his uh, uh, presentation today. So thank you for joining us, Pino, and uh, uh, over to you. Uh, thank you, Yavinder. I must apologize for my uh, fancy, uh, fancy voice. I've got a rhinopharyngitis, so I will try to to speak how loud as, as I can. I will share my uh, screen. You see it? Yes, that's great, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so the title uh, of my presentation is, is a question. And the question is, is forest management really a tool for the conservation of tropical forest? And I would like to give you my uh, perspective uh, as a forest ecologist. Uh, so the presentation uh, will uh, be made of three main parts. First is uh, explaining the context about the importance of tropical production forest, the principles of selective logging, the research study sites that we have developed in CIRAD, but also with partners. Then the second part will be about our knowledge on the assessment of the sustainability of forest management with two main parts, what we know about the impact of selective logging and what we know uh, about the long-term sustainability of selective logging. And then I will finish with a, a conclusion with a three main questions. What does the research tell us and what must be changed? How to ensure the paradigm shift and what are the essential enable condition to start this paradigm. The tropical uh, production forest, uh, as you know, or as you may know, 75% uh, of our tropical forests are now disturbed or secondary forest. ITCO uh, assess that tropical forest production cover around 400 million hectares, which represent more or less 50% of the tropical rainforest. Uh, FAO uh, estimated that timber demand will double by 2050. And so far, natural forests are the main providers of timber. And finally, we also know, and many studies show that production natural forests provide key environmental services and conservation of biodiversity. So those production uh, forests have a, a, a double um, role Production, production of goods and protecting the uh, environment. So one question that we can ask ourselves is, what are the future of these forests and their potential role in both production of goods and environmental services? And I would like, and what I would like to show you tonight is uh, how the long-term monitoring of the dynamics of tropical forest can answer this question. So selective logging um, in the tropic has been implemented quite uh, generally and widespread in the, in, in the tropics since uh, the 70s. Before the 70s, we, we had a lot of uh, experimental sites of uh, civil development, uh, the, the very well-known uh, Shutterwood system and so on. But in early 70s, uh, all those experiments were not implemented uh, at a big scale. And most of the tropical country implemented selective logging. What is selective logging? It's, very, it's a very basic uh, civic cultural system. It's based on a very simple rule, a, di a minimum diameter cutting limit. So depending on the region of the country, uh, in the Amazon, for example, is above 60, uh, 60 centimeters. In Central Africa, it's rather uh, over uh, above 80 centimeters. And uh, a logging cycle duration. Um, so you harvest few trees per hectare and you count uh, on the natural regeneration to be able to come back at the same um, place 
20 or 30, 60 years after the first uh, logging, uh, harvesting. So there is only very few commercial species with generally low growth. They are all growth uh, timber species. And unfortunately, in the real world, most of the logging is illegal, so it's not plain and is also involving a lot of damage to the sand. And this is um, the research that has been done regarding the impact of, log of logging. There are three main types of research. The short and long-term impact of logging, how the logging impact the stands, the, the biodiversity, but also the forest dynamics. Uh, and a second uh, type of work is a simulation of different logging rules based on modeling um, and, and based also on data that have been uh, collected during, um, during many decades. And the third is actually the uh, long-term forest dynamic after logging, which are really the basis of the study of modeling. The objective of this research is just to improve the present logging rules, how to improve them in order to be uh, more sustainable than they are, to assess the capacity of production forests to produce timbers and to provide environmental services, and at the end, to assess the conservation value on the long-term basis of tropical uh, production forests. So here, I said that uh, most of the research on the impact of logging, the long-term impact of logging is based on, um, on environmental sites, and here, are three examples of very important uh, experimental sites that have been uh, implemented in the 80s. And one, I, I selected one in each continent and I selected the ones I, I know better, which means that they are those implemented by uh, CIRAD. So the first one is Mbaki in the Central Africa Republic. Uh, the second is a Paracu in French Guiana that, that you, I guess, uh, most of you knows. No, and um, strike in Indonesia. All those experimental sites were made with the same ideas, big plots of four hectares and divided into uh, one hectares and uh, experimentation of different treatments with a control, uh, reducing impact logging and sometimes reducing impact logging plus timber stand improvement like in, the, in Paracu and also a fuel wood, um, fuel wood uh, harvesting. The most important thing that these experimental sites uh, brings is that we know exactly what happens uh, in the plots. We know exactly the log intensity, we know exactly the damage that have been uh, uh, created by logging, and we know exactly the position of the trees, the species. So we have a lot of basic information that help the forester to do a better simulation and to understand better the uh, impact of logging on short and long term. And it seems to be obvious, but actually this kind of experimental sites where you know what really happened and where you have also control plots uh, is not very uh, widespread in the world. However, CIRAD is not the only one, uh, the first institution to set uh, this kind of experimental sites. And in the 2012, I was, really uh, um, in to try to federate together all those experimental sites that we also participate as, as partners. And um, with the help of uh, CGIR, uh, I managed to gather most of the experimental sites in the three continents, in the Amazon, in Central Africa, and in Southeast Asia to gather into a, a, a tropical, what we call now the Tropical Managed Forest Observatory. And uh, now we have uh, 12 countries uh, involved, uh, 18 funding uh, partners and 25 research institutions, more than 50 scientists. And as you can read in, in the slide, we have uh, more than 30 experimental sites and quite a lot uh, number of plots. This to say that um, this uh, Tropical Managed Forest Observatory is a unique uh, observatory and a, a unique network of experimental sites. Of course, you have other experimental sites in the, in the world, but they are mainly looking at undisturbed uh, tropical forests. The most uh, particular 
characteristic of our, our tropical managed forest observatory is that we are really focusing on um, uh, on logged over forests and that each site we know exactly what happened. So now about sustainability and impact of logging, just to introduce this uh, second part, <coughs> you can see by eyes that um, the difference that can be uh, seen uh, between a conventional logging, which means uh, that it's a logging without any planning, and what we call the reduced impact logging that have been uh, implemented in the uh, late 80s in, in, in Southeast Asia, but also in the Amazon. You can see by eyes that planning makes a lot of deeper, uh, a lot of difference in terms of, of damage. In reduced impact logging, you harvest, you, um, you make inventory, you know exactly where you are gonna harvest, you know the location of the tree that uh, will be logged. So it's, um, it's really a, an important uh, way to reduce as much as possible the uh, region, the, um, the damage to the stand. First uh, thing that we, um, we understood and that we showed in the three continents is that in terms of damage, log intensity matters. It's very obvious, but it was not obvious at the beginning. And we can see that in East Kalimantan, in Indonesia, in Brazil, in, in the Amazon, and even in Central Africa, where the log intensity is not very high, you have a very big and strong uh, correlation between the log intensity and uh, the damage that um, is created by, by logging. But log intensity also matters in terms of biodiversity. Uh, for example, on the left uh, on the left side of this uh, slide, uh, a study of Gibson showed that uh, comparing different land use system, the logged over forests are very close to the primary forest in terms of biodiversity. And Beauty Lova and now show that log intensity, even for biodiversity, uh, also matters. As you can see, the correlation between the loss of uh, the richness, the species the richness of mammal or amphibians, and log intensity. We look at the recovery of different uh, variable uh, after logging. You can see on the left that carbon stock in log forest is still very high, even. Uh, because it's only selective logging, so you only uh, select few trees. So most of the carbon stock remains in the forest. In terms of biodiversity, you can see that biodiversity is uh, still very, very high if compared to primary, primary forest is over 80%, and sometimes there is no difference with primary, uh, with primary forest here. And the problem, it's a problem, problem is here is the timber recovery, which at the best condition uh, doesn't exceed five or, 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 or it less than 60%. So logging impact mainly impacts indeed the recovery of timber, which is the, the, the variable which take more time to, to recover. And this was um, uh, confirmed with a study in uh, in the uh, in the Amazon again based on the TMFO uh, sample plots, you can see on the left um, side here that there is a good correlation between log intensity, which is here expressed by uh, carbon loss, and the recovery time. And you can see also that within the log intensity, which is here represented by this uh, red square, uh, which is between ten and thirty cubic meter per hectare the biomass will recover in seven to, 25, to 21 years. And the other interesting results is that beside this uh, general view, there are differences in terms of uh, geographical uh, position. You can see here that the North, East and West Amazonian forest recover much faster with a 21, um, a ton of carbon uh, per hectare, while in the south, the dynamics and the recovery in terms of biomass is less. So these two uh, show the, the importance to have also a regional um, assessment of the impact of logging, because a plot in the northeast Amazonia will not react to logging, uh, the same as a plot in southeast 
um, in Southwest Amazonia. So the geographical variation is important to, to take into account and TMFO allow, allows this kind of anal regional analysis. So we were talking about, uh, before talking really about sustainability, we have to define what is uh, uh, sustainability. And I will present you two main definitions. The first is the sustainability sense stricto. And I think this is the sustainability that most conservationists um, agreed on. So you have a, before the logging, you have a constant initial stock that is represented by this line. And then come the logging. And the sustainability sense stricto is to come back to this constant initial stock. So it may take a long time to reach this uh, initial stock. And then once you have uh, recovered uh, the 100% of what you have uh, harvested, then you can come back to, um, to the place that you harvested the first time. If you want to reduce the logging cycle, you can implement post-logging civiculture. And this is one of the ideas of uh, tropical forestry is to implement post-logging uh, civiculture like uh, um, stain improvement to reduce uh, the logging cycle. And the other way to do also, or to reduce the logging cycle is to reduce since the first logging, the log intensity, because we will have less um, volume to recover. The, the rate of recovery will remain the same, but because you harvested less timber, you will, um, uh, you will take less time than if you harvest more timber. The sustainability since Largo, Largo, which is mainly used by uh, tropical forester and forester in general, you still have these uh, timber stock, initial timber stock. You go for logging, but you do not go back to the initial, uh, to the initial um, timber stock. You accept to have a constant production, but also to have a lower timber stock. And this is what we call the primary forest premium. And this is, um, the main uh, definition that Forrester uh, used. Again, if you want to reduce, if you go for if you go for the, the sustainability uh, census uh, strict law, of course, you will have to wait much, much longer. If you want to reduce uh, the, the, the logging cycle, again, you can uh, implement reducing pack logging plus post-logging civic culture. But you can see the big difference between the first definition and the second one. So oh, um, based on those definitions and especially on the second, we tested uh, the uh, sustainability of uh, Brazilian production forest. Words on the context, in the 2006, the Brazilian government created the uh, uh, Brazilian Forest Service, Service. And the main objective of this um, uh, department was to create concession area where uh, the state will Harvest uh, log will harvest timber in a in the legal framework. Um, nowadays, um, the total area of concession in the in the Brazilian Amazon is only 1.6 million hectares. But we assess the potential area by using some basic criteria, like uh, including all the public forests, but that are in the Brazilian Amazon biome, of course which are designated for sustainable use, but not in community forest, indigenous territory or military zone. Applying this, um, this rule, we assess that the potential area of the concession in the Amazon Brazilian, in the Brazilian Amazon will be 35 million hectares. Again, we use the uh, TMFO uh, uh, data in the Amazon to um, make simulation of different logging intensity and different logging regime and see what is the long-term sustainability in both present, um, present concession and future concession. Before doing that, we, uh, uh, we made a, a study on the recovery of uh, volume uh, in, in the Amazon. And you can see that, again, you have a long 
you have also a variability, a regional variability in terms of recovery of, uh, of the volume. And what we show is that 100% volume recovery would allow a log intensity of 10, met 10 cubic meter every 65 years. And here in the middle is present rules, which only allow 50% present rules is 20 cubic meters per hectare and 35 <coughs> years uh, of logging cycle. But what we wanted to, uh, to, to know is what would happen if we have repetitive logging cycle. So uh, we use another definition. We didn't use this uh, definition of, uh, of sustainable uh, management because we realized that actually in most of our experiments, can maintain the production, but you have a reduction um, of an, a constant reduction of commercial volume. And it means that over the period uh, of time after logging or after successive logging, you may uh, deplete totally your commercial volume. And we decided that the sustainability uh, would be that we that the system can maintain the production over 500 years. We think that uh, this, um, this uh, limit of 500 years uh, is quite reasonable. And we tested 27 uh, log intensity uh, scenario by uh, using three main variables. The first is the proportion of commercial spaces in the stand. So we, uh, we met scenario with 20%, 50 and 90%. Uh, which means that 20% above 50 centimeters are commercial and, and then 50 and 90%. We also may vary the uh, log intensity, uh, 10 cubic meters, 20 cubic meters per hectare and 30. Uh, and the cycle duration, we uh, use uh, 20 years, 35 years, which is uh, the uh, actual, the present uh, logging duration and 60 years. And the annual production target, which is the present production in the, in the Brazilian Amazon, is one is um, 11 million of cubic meters of log. So the idea would be <coughs> if the concession, the potential, and the present concession can uh, produce this uh, uh, 11 million cubic meters. So here are the main results. Um, the first result is that in potential area, uh, none of the scenario with 20% here are sustainable. You can see that the duration is no more than 125 years. So there's no one that is um, sustainable according to our definition. Only four out of 27 have maintained the production um, over 500 years. Three of these that you are here um, include a proportion of commercial species of 90%. The present logging regime, which is 20 cubic meter per hectare every 35 years, the production is not maintained at second cycle, you can see here. And the annual production in present concessions and under present regimes is 473,000 cubic meters. And under the most sustainable regime, which is 10 cubic meter every 65 years, the production reach only 160 cubic, uh, 60,000 cubic meters. And finally, under potential concession, 35 million hectares, and under the most sustainable scenario, uh, 10 cubic meter per hectare every 60 years, the annual production will be only 3.5 cubic meter, uh, million cubic meter. So it means that we are very far from the uh, 11 million cubic meter, and that natural forest obviously cannot answer the market demand that very quickly we will have to find alternative, source, alternative sources of timber. And here to show that time after logging and, and the best scenario here is the 60 years every 10 cubic, uh, is 10 cubic meter per uh, every 60 years. You can see here that the commercial volume almost doesn't change, which means that 
this is the most sustainable scenario because your um, your commercial stock is 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 constant. Now let's move to to Indonesia. Indonesia have officially uh, more than 125 million hectares of forest, um, around 56 million hectares of production forest, and around the same amount of protected areas and 10% of plantation, which represent more or less 13 million hectares of uh, plantation. And uh, around 35 million hectares of concession, which gather these 56 million hectares. What is interesting actually is that, as you can see here, the total production of food in the uh, in Indonesia is 61 uh, million of cubic meters. The more than half of this is from plantation is acacia. So it means that um, Indonesia have already started this kind of transition. It means that most of the production is now made by plantation and no more by natural forest. I think it was important to, to notice this uh, important fact in Indonesia. So, uh, one important um, characteristic of those forests in Southeast Asia is the dominance of digital which represents more than 25% of the density, but 50% of the basal uh, area. And there is a big difference of the Wallace line and on the east side, the flora and the flora difference on the west side of the Wallace line, you have this dominance, which is quite unique in, um, in the tropics of one family, uh, which also uh, make the, the roof of the forest because 80% of the trees, of the canopy trees uh, belongs to this uh, family. And this family also dipter crabs are the most commercial species uh, in the regions. And because their density is very high, we will see that the logging density is also very, very high. So here we, are, we use the SREC experimental site that has been uh, implemented in uh, 1989 with uh, Four main treatments, conventional logging, re two reduced impact logging, and one control. But we have, uh, so you can see that uh, the log intensity is uh, between one to 70 trees harvested by a per hectare, which makes this uh, log intensity the highest in the, in the tropical world. And the volume uh, harvested uh, vary between nine to almost 250 cubic meter, meter uh, per hectare. Look at the damage. Here, the, um, the techniques reducing pack logging, but also the uh, log intensity. And you can see that um, when you look at the difference between reducing pack logging and low log intensity, which means less than uh, eight trees per hectare, you can make a, a big difference because the damage are reduced by 50%. However, if you do not uh, limit the log intensity, the total damage are almost the same as conventional. So here again, and particularly in, deep talk, in this deep talk up forest, techniques is important, but uh, log intensity is as much as important as the, as the, te as the techniques. Here is a, an example of simulation of what based on, on the post-logging uh, dynamics data. You can see here again that uh, we have uh, reached a plateau of about 40 cubic meter every 35 years, but we have harvested almost the double during the uh, first logging, which is again the uh, primary forest premium that I explained uh, in a previous slide. So this is a concrete result of simulation that we have done almost 20 years ago. Now let's move to uh, Central Africa, others regions, other reality. 
Uh, the forest area is almost 170 million hectares. The production forest is 53 million hectares. Big forest concession, see that almost 51 million hectares for an area that is much less than the Brazilian Amazon. You remember the potential concession area in the Amazon is only 30, 35 million hectares. So big difference if we compare with uh, the Amazon. And um, uh, a lot of uh, managed uh, forest and a quite uh, a substantial uh, area of uh, forest uh, certification. So here we take the example of uh, Mbaki. So quickly, uh, 10 plots, treatment, control, real, and uh, real plus uh, devitalization. The main result is again that um, the number of tree logs and the basal area lost are um, correlated, means that block intensity in Central Africa also matters. And of course, you have a good correlation between the number of tree logs and the basal area log, which is quite they use 39 timber species. The log intensity varied between two and nine trees. And the impact uh, varied, of course, according to the log intensity, between zero, between almost no, no damage to 48% of the barrier, basal area destroyed. And, uh, the, in terms of biomass recovery, here again, as we have seen in the Amazon, but also in Southeast Asia, after 20 years only 60% of the plot recover the biomass. So you have a very quite good uh, recovery of the biomass and they estimated that years, it will be 85% of those plots that uh, will recover. And in terms of volume recovery, only three plots would recover, have recovered 100% their timber. And those plots were all, uh, mm, with a, a log intensity less than four trees per hectare. So again, the log intensity uh, uh, matters and the recovery of timber is uh, not very good, even in Central Africa. Finish about uh, what, uh, what we know about the long-term impact. Uh, a, a recent study done by Hitner in, in Paracu is to look at the both impact of logging uh, and climate change and they, uh, they made simulation uh, with the three different scenario, the, uh, with no climate change with a 2.6 um, degrees increment and 8.5. Here that with a, a, um, uh, a scenario of 2.6 uh, degrees, you have a loss of 43 ton of biomass per hectare in uh, in comparison with the uh, the uh, climate change with no climate change and with uh, 8.5 you have a, a substantial loss of the uh, of the biomass and um, and here we have uh, uh, if you compare the three scenario you can have a loss of uh, mean harvesting of 40 percent between the uh, scenario of 2.6 and, and 8.5 a recommended uh, um, regime, logging regime, would be 25 cubic meters per hectare every 70 years. So now, to finish uh, and to conclude, what does the research tell us and what might be changed? First is that conservation value of forest of logged forest is very is very high. I think that uh, we need to stop to think that logged over forests are degraded forests. They can be degraded forests. But if logging is done in a proper way, they are not degraded. They are still uh, natural forests with a high conservation value. Uh, the timber volume recovery in natural production forest is much lower than expected. And it's a maximum of 50%, whatever we do. The proportion of commercial species must increase because this is also a variable that can make this recovery uh, increase. The log intensity, however, must be decreased and logging cycle duration increased. On long-term basis, we know that natural production forests cannot feed the market demand alone and that other sources of timber must be developed urgently and right now. To ensure this, um, 
how to ensure this paradigm. So the market price of timber and any product from natural forest must include the environmental value of these products. So far, the timber coming from natural forest, they don't have um, a, um, a different price than timber coming from plantation. And, but they are, different, they are completely different products. And I think that timber coming from natural forest should have a, a much higher prices. Restoration initiative with increasing wood demand are, according to me, an opportunity. There are opportunities to try to develop other sources of timber, including plantation, but also including um, agroforestry and management of uh, secondary forest. The plantation also must complete the demand of timber and wood beside natural forest. So they have to release the pressure to release the pressure on natural forest and developing community forest management to increase the areas of managed natural forest is a way uh, forward, especially for uh, the Amazon region. Um, we see that there are uh, several million hectares of community forest management potential to be, uh, to be uh, added to the 35 million hectares of concession. And what are the main enabled conditions? First is market price. I'm coming from a region where we are like a good wine, good wine. And of course, I don't pay a Petrus of 1964 the same price as a, 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 a wine of a very low quality. And this should be the same for the timber. Timber coming from natural forest, the price should include not only the quality of the timber, but also the origin of this timber and the environmental services that the remaining forest will, will, will uh, give and will provide for a human being. We have to stop illegal logging because it's uh, an unfair competition with those who are trying to do uh, a good job, uh, like reduced impact logging, concession that uh, uh, look for a certification, and stop deforestation because deforestation is also uh, an important unfair competition uh, and source of timber that must uh, also stop. So I think that without the three basic enable condition, it will be very difficult to develop and to change the paradigm shift and to move into a more diversified civic culture and diversified source of timber. Here it's a, it's a paper that I uh, published in the conservation, uh, try to sensibilize uh, the, the public about uh, the um, the role of, uh, of uh, sustainable forest management and the need to change our view and change our, our uh, objective uh, towards a, a more um, sustainable uh, forest management of natural forest. And I thank you very much. Here, uh, the, the main uh, uh, reference that I cited and uh, I will leave uh, the, the presentation to uh, Yavinder so we, we can share among us. Thank you very much. Okay, hey, thank you, Clinio. Uh, uh, absolutely fantastic, a uh, really comprehensive overview of uh, all of your own colleagues' work over, over multiple continents. It's amazing to have so much data uh, there in your presentation. I encourage, I invite uh, the audience to uh, switch on cameras if you like, if, uh, if you're comfortable with that. It's nice to have some faces in the audience. And uh, we can open up to questions now. So they either raise your hand and we, I, I can invite you to directly ask Pino your question, or if for any reason you can't uh, stick your question in chat and I, I, I'll relay your question. But just before, while we're waiting for people to pose their questions, uh, uh, I'll, I'll start off with one. I was very struck uh, in your models of, of uh, timber sustainability that you have this 500 year uh, framing or even a thousand year framing of timber volume sustainability and very few industries in the modern world, when we think of sustainability at the most, we tend to think of perhaps one century uh, uh, in terms of uh, environmental sustainability. And very few other industries have this 500 year framework, you know, which is certainly admirable in, in, in some sense, but perhaps do you find uh, any kickback on that and saying, well, actually, you know, we don't know what the world's going to be like in 500 years time. Why do we have to think and plan on that time year, time scale on sustainability? If it's sustainable on a hundred year time scale, that's good enough for us. So how would you respond to, to somebody who would uh, uh, respond like that to, to, to your presentation? 
I answer that uh, as forester, you have to to have a long view of uh, of the management, and if you only uh, simulate 100 years, it's only two or three cycles, so it's not really enough. What we wanted to uh, to show is what would be the real sustainability, and actually, as as I explained, the sustainability would be to 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 keep a constant initial stock or at least a constant stock of timber. And the best scenario is for the Amazon at least, is this 10 cubic meters per hectare every 60 years. But I can tell you that um, this paper was not very welcome in the Brazilian forester community uh, because actually it seemed, it, it really uh, revised all our vision about the role and the potential of, of of uh, tropical uh, natural forest to provide timber. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very nice, uh, a very nice demonstration that natural forests are not plantation and that they are not only a timber sources and that they have to be uh, looked like, like that. Mm -hmm. And just, just to follow up on that one before we hand you over to Connie, uh, uh, clearly if you recommend a lower timber volume uh, from, from forests, uh, the, the commercial value of that forest land decreases uh, and is there a danger that that would if if part of the the trade-off that's going on is uh logging sustainable logging of some form versus conversion to other to non-forest land uses like plantation uh or oil palm or others does that possibly in some cases shift the equation that, that people are making in terms of land use to away from having any forest at all toward or, or towards plantation or, or non-forest land uses this is the danger. One can uh, can think that, okay, natural forest will not produce wood, let's convert it into acacia and so on. But the other uh, option would be, in the world there are, I think, one billion hectares of degraded land. Why not rehabilitate this, this land and, and try to plant on these lands in order to release the pressure on natural forest? Mm -hmm. So I go for option B, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's like the intensity uh, intensification of agri agriculture. You may produce more and, and stay in the area or say, okay, I can produce more, so I'm gonna expand my my production. So it's it's a danger indeed. Okay, thanks, uh, Connie, over to you. Yeah, hi, thanks, Clinio. Excellent presentation and really important findings. Um, I want to talk also about the importance of, of context and sort of social dimensions and thinking about whether it makes sense to log in an area or not, but also in particular, I think around this issue of legality. So um, I think we make sometimes might make an assumption about uh, the appropriateness of existing laws and legal contexts and existing court systems, et cetera, when we think about um, the importance of being legal, but actually there's a lot of research in a number of, of different countries in different world regions that suggests that the laws are not necessarily well designed, particularly in terms of allowing local people access to, res to forest resources. I mean, one of the more, I think, striking examples is, you know, countries like Ghana where, um, actually farmers who have allowed timber to grow on their own cocoa farm have no right to that timber and the timber is given off as a concession legally um, to be logged by concessionaires. Now, in that case, if the farmer cannot afford to go anywhere else to get timber and they're growing the tree, you know, it's their, their tree that they're stewarding on, on their, their land, um, arguably that shouldn't be illegal, but it is. So I, and then you have an, a number of interesting cases in Southeast Asia and other countries where um, the cracking down on legality has tended to mean going after minority communities who don't have any legal rights to the, to the timber in their, in their um, surrounding you know, um, communities. So, so there's a real danger if we perhaps, and I wonder what your thoughts are on this, if we immediately leap to the conclusion that legal is good and, and fair and that illegal is bad and unfair, because I think it's a much more complex reality and it's, it's sometimes concerning perhaps to um, talk about enforcing laws until those laws actually are working in the way that we might prefer that they do. So I don't wonder what your thoughts are about, about that. And then also one more thing about the location. So 
it might be that it's more um, it's more in, in the long term as a society, you know, beneficial to reforest degraded land rather than allow logging in certain natural forest areas. But that is not going to be the same people that can benefit necessarily from you know timber grown you know 20 miles away versus grown in their neighborhood. So I think there's you know there's, there's sort of social dimensions that that maybe we need to think about too in deciding about where where logging should happen or not. And I just wonder what your thoughts are on that. A very good point indeed. Uh, actually, when I, I was talking about illegal logging, I was referring to those um, private uh, sectors uh, like in the Amazon, they cut whatever they want. And, and I was not referring to uh, indeed to local people. I know that, for example, uh, in Cameroon, in former sector is 80% of the log production. So, and, and there is a problem of, and they are all illegal, but it doesn't mean that um, they are not sustainable. They are not, maybe they are not, but they, they need that to, for, for a living. So I, I think there are very, very different dimension that indeed I didn't um, include in my presentation because otherwise it would have lasted uh, much uh, longer. And I'm not also uh, uh, an anthropologist or a sociologist. So, but this social dimension and particularly the, um, the community forest management, I think it's really a potential because I think that also um, um, community forest management can accept to reduce the log intensity and to uh, include a, a longer cycle because they have different vision, different perception, and uh, that they also have different, um, a higher diversity of products in the forest and so on. So it might be also a solution and it's what we are seeing in the paper that uh, we published uh, this year in forest ecology and management in the um, for the Amazon. I think that um, community forest management must be promoted and in most of the cases illegal as well. So there is a, 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 an effort to legalize what is good <laughs> and, uh, and uh, fight what is illegal and, and, and not good at all. But very nice point. I will moderate, I will okay. moderate my purpose. <laughs> but just, just to follow up on that response, uh, do you have a sense of in the illegal logging sector, which obviously is really hard to describe, how much of the sector is that smallholder, uh, people outside the system, as Connie describes, and how much is it more this illegal corporate mafias that are doing large scale production outside of the law? And, do we, and how does that vary with geographies? Do, do we have a sense of that? Obviously, it's very hard because it's illegal uh, yeah. to, to describe. We have the big numbers uh, in me in the the literature said that 50% of logging is illegal, but it's a big numbers. But what who is that illegal? Be exactly. Yeah. Connie, do you have a sense of that from, from your work? It it really it really varies by country. And there there is some work on that. I, I could I could look up some papers. Um yeah, I think the situation varies quite a bit, but I think a quite a substantial amount is sort of informal domestic production or for domestic markets. That's not your, you know, just um yeah, it's not your mafia gangs. Um, I, I think that that would be the minority in most cases, actually. That's why it's called informal. It's not, yeah, informal. It's not yeah. informal. Right, exactly. So it used to be that that was distinguished as informal, but now with this pressure, you know, to demonstrate legality and it's like black and white, it sort yeah. of it ignores all all of that, you know, all that difference in in what types of illegality are happening. Yeah. Excellent point. Mm -hmm. Great. There's a question on the chat from Yoki Max. Do, do you, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, would you like to make your question directly? Or if not, I, I'll, uh, I'll read it out. Uh, how should we approach restoration? What exactly should we restore? Which species? Most of the species we get from national forests will never survive in the plantations. <clears throat> Good question. I think there's two aspects, the techniques what species and, and how to plant. But for me, the most important aspect is the social aspect. To whom, for what? I think that since the beginning, uh, you have to have, um, you need to have a bottom-up approach with the local actors, with the stakeholders, and try to discuss and to uh, define what they want, what they, what they need. Otherwise, and most of the, uh, 
of the um, restoration for forest restoration programs that doesn't don't take into account the uh, the social aspect are failure unless it's a big program of the state and they decide to to plant and they they um, they um, the people leave the the, the 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 region and they plant trees but if you want to plant trees and have people you i think that the social aspect is uh, is key and i'm not sure that uh, uh, the politicians uh, have understand that because when you look at the bond challenge all the targets it's million hectares or million or billion of trees per year doesn't mean nothing I mean, you can plant today and in six months, everything is fine, but you have reached the, ta the targets. And uh, <laughs> the same with the, the green wall in, inside. I mean, it's a failure because the social aspect is not uh, taken into account. So for me, the, the first is the social um, aspect comes first, and then we decide what to plant and, 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 and for whom. Thank you. Uh, Tom? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Edwin. Thanks, Pinio. Um, fascinating presentation. Uh, uh, amazing data sets and this, this ability to look over decades in the past and centuries into the future to understand how these forests work. Uh, I've got a question about the carbon stocks. Um, you described even in your, um, even in the, the high sustainability case that uh, carbon is reconstituted towards the end of each cycle and then it goes down and then up again. So that implies that the, the time average or the landscape average is below what the landscape could store if none of it was logged. Um, so that creates a carbon penalty. I wonder if you could talk to us a bit about what the scale of that carbon penalty is across, across, is across these millions of hectares that are under management and how much we'd get back if, um, if these forests were taken out of production and production was happening elsewhere instead? <laughs> I'm not sure I can answer this question, <laughs> um, but it might be a, a good, uh, a good uh, research uh, problem to, to, to assess. Um, I think that the reality, if you want to come back to the initial uh, stock, it's gonna take more than hundred years. So it's not realistic. The advantage to, uh, to reach a lower level, what we call the, the premium uh, primary uh, forest, uh, is that <clears throat> if tomorrow you stop logging, the forest will recover and will come back to a, a price and um, um, level quite rapidly. And I think we also need to, how, how would I say that? Well, there's an obsession about carbon. I mean, okay we're gonna have a, a lower carbon stock, but the biodiversity will be very high and will be even higher than if it is converted into plantation and so on. So the protection of the of soil, the protection of river, and, and it's also um, an ecosystem that will, um, that will uh, stock carbon as well. So I think that uh, we have to look at the others, uh, environmental services that are even more important than on carbon. Sorry, but <laughs> okay, uh, Shyam. Thank you. Uh, it's a nice person. Uh, I would like to uh, to make this uh, logging and timber production are sustainable. Can we use the traditional ecological knowledge of these forest dwellers or tribal people? they know which native species is a fast growing and have a copying power uh, uh, and how they grow them uh, much better. So then we can have diversify the, uh, the, the number of species rather than using uh, only few commercial species like in agriculture to feed the, uh, the, the uh, growing population, we are using only few species. Similarly to to, to, to meet the demand of the timber, we are using only the limited uh, number of timber species. So this traditional ecological knowledge of the forest dwellers can be uh, utilized. What is your take on that? That's a good question. I think we should we should include it much more than, than we did. I think indeed we have a, a very uh, Western and capitalist vision of the forest. And I think regarding natural forest, we should 
indeed include. And this could also help in having more species uh, in the market and diversify the species. But still logging is very, uh, um, is driven by uh, market demand. And it's gonna be a, a, a big challenge to move from 20% of commercial species to 90%. But definitely, I think that is something that I didn't mention, but that should could be also a, a way to go forward. Yeah, uh, now overall we are nowadays using these, uh, you know, the composite wood or the, um, we are need a biomass rather than, than the dimensions of the, of the timber. So any anything is going to be going, you know, the plywood industry and other things. So biomass is much more important now than than uh, species. Yeah, that's what I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Here, David. Hi. Thanks for a great talk. Um, I'm quite interested to understand how your predictions for sustainable login cycles are based off successful natural regeneration? And if the natural regeneration fails, then what would that mean? Um, just because there's some evidence to suggest that seedlings will struggle to regenerate in these log forests because of skid trails and changes in nutrients, particularly in the forests where um, species are very highly specialized on soil conditions. So I wondered what your thoughts on that were. Well, it depends a lot of, again, on the damage, on the techniques and on, on logging intensity. And <clears throat> natural regeneration, the result of the natural regeneration, you will be able to see it on the third cycle, on the fourth cycle. It's going to take a lot of time. What is also important is to look at the, the future crop trees and try not to damage them, because we know that if you damage those trees, your uh, harvesting, the next harvesting will be uh, compromised. So um, <clears throat> what can, the failure of natural regeneration, uh, ski trail, the, the, it seemed it seem very, um, when you go to the forest after logging, it looks uh, like, uh, like uh, a battlefield and, and, and you look only, because you only walk in the ski trail and when you look at the ski trail, you say, you think that is, it, it will never regenerate, but it did. I came back in, in plots that were harvested 20 years ago in the strike project, and the forest were, was looking very quite quite good and, and like a primary forest, and you couldn't see any ski trail uh, marks anymore. And there was a lot of regeneration. What can happen when you make a lot of damage and high log intensity is that rather to stimulate, and this is the case for Cestisasia, Deep talk our forests are actually light demanding species. They uh, they recover quickly quickly because they like um, they like the, the 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 light. But if you open too much the canopy, then they are not competitive with secondary forest and pioneer forest. So if you make a lot of damage and open a lot of the uh, lot of forest, then you change completely the flora and the regeneration will will first take the pioneer will first uh, regenerate. So you're gonna have a, a, a logging uh, cycle duration much longer than if you uh, are careful and, and if you open uh, moderately uh, the canopy. Opening the moder uh, moderately the canopy is a stimulation for re regeneration. It must be seen as a, a kind of uh, regeneration stimulation. Hope I answer your question. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, and, uh, okay, uh, any more questions from anyone? Uh, Dr. Matt, would you like to ask your question? I'm not sure what the name is there, but there's a hand raised. Would you like to ask your question? Can't hear anything. Uh, I think you're trying to trying to speak, you, you seem to be muted at the moment. No, we're not hearing anything. If you, if you want to type your question, I can, I can relay it. We can't hear you. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I'll ask a follow-up question. Uh, I was interested in your, 
your climate change simulations. And that got me thinking about the interaction between logging intensity and resilience to extreme events. And I wonder in the, in the range of studies that, that you've uh, had uh, across the tropics, whether you see this interaction, do more intensity logged forests show more vulnerability, more response of growth rates or mortality rates to, to droughts or other extreme events? And what's the interaction between intensity of logging and resilience? I think that um, the higher log intensity, the, the resilience, uh, the less, because I think that uh, we, in this um, context of climate change, if you uh, damage a lot of the forest, the forest will be much uh, vulnerable to fires, to a dry uh, season. And uh, it's, it's really, uh, there are not a lot of study about that, especially on the long term. But I think that uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, tropical managed forest observatory can bring uh, such kind of, of data. So far, to my knowledge, I don't think we know a lot about that, but I think it's really a future of our, our research activity is to look at both the impact of uh, human activities on forest and climate change, which is uh, not easy to do because uh, there is a, a, a lot of uncertainty and we'll have to use a uh, simulation and modeling with a different scenario as they start in, in Paracu. But I think it's uh, the future of our, of our research indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder whether that could help identify pot potential thresholds uh, where- Yeah, uh, tipping points. Yeah. Yeah, where if you go beyond a certain amount of logging, yeah. you create yeah. the risk of losing the logging. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I, I can see Joachim Matt's got this comment uh, uh, in the chat now. 10 meters cubed every 60 years, will the logging company survive? De Again, depends on the price you, will, you sell your logs. I mean, yes. if you sell a 2,000 US dollar a cubic meter, the business is good. So and if you have a logging, yes. a logging concession of uh, 50 or 60,000 uh, hectares, might be good. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that so far, and, and, and we're still in, in this, uh, in this uh, logical framework, is that we still have a lot of primary forest. Let's get the, the wood out of it. And without thinking that uh, in the next 30 years, the situation will be... Uh, no more primary forest, so no more these uh, primary uh, forest premium. So, and I think we have to anticipate that. This was my main message in the paper that I, 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 I published in the conservation is that we know what's gonna happen. And I think we have to anticipate because restoration program will take time and trees are not uh, uh, crop, uh, crop uh, plants that uh, grow very fast. So we have to anticipate, I think that Unfortunately, or not, I don't know, but I think that logging in natural forests will go on for the next 30 or 40 years. The problem is what's gonna happen in 40 years. If there is no alternative source, alternative, timber source alternative, will go on to deploy the, uh, the natural um, timber resource with the problem of climate change and, and, and resilience. Mm -hmm. Great, and Tom, you have another question? Thanks, yes, sorry to be greedy. Um, the, um, uh, many of your graphs showed the, the assumption for primary forests to be sort of um, a, a static level of um, biomass uh, into the future. But we know that in many parts of the tropics, um, biomass is increasing over time because of CO2 fertilization and other effects. I wonder if you'd explored um, what that implied, because over the course of a couple of logging cycles, that could be quite a lot of additional additional biomass that you'd need to reconstitute to get back to a nat what we would then be a natural level. Uh, actually, I think that uh, a recent study by, uh... <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <coughs> By Simon Lewis showed that at least in the Amazon, uh, the natural forest, the primary forest, is um, is uh, stocking less than ten years ago. I mean, there is a, a decrease of uh, of carbon stock uh, because of this climate change, and 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 because there is um, 
um, the rate of mortality is, is higher than 10 years ago. And um, now the Amazon forest steel stock have a, a positive uh, balance in terms of uh, stock of carbons, but they are much less than 10 or 15 years ago. So even if there's a kind of fertilization of CO2, um, the balance, the stock is, uh, is decreasing and it might be due to both mortality of old growth uh, species <clears throat> and that are replaced by a more uh, light demanding uh, species with uh, light uh, uh, wood density. So the stock carbon, but much less than old growth forest with, uh, with old growth trees with a higher density of, of, of wood. So it's something also that uh, will have to be uh, um, investigated, but uh, the figure I show is uh, globally, of course, there is also a kind of uh, variation. Sometimes if a, a big tree in your plot uh, die, then you will have a, a, a decrease in, in the carbon soil, but uh, on the long-term basis, we made the uh, assumption that is the, the stock is constant. Mm -hmm. right. the climate just, climate just to clarify that, I think, uh, unless you're aware of studies that I'm not aware of, the, 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 the Amazon forest was still acting as a carbon sink, but that sink was weakening over time, uh, but it was still a sink at the, for now, but it's projected yeah. in the future to yeah. go to zero. Uh, whereas the, the Congo Basin seemed to be still be a, yes, a strong exactly. sink with no evidence of, of, yeah. of uh, weakening. So I think to Tom's question still, still, still is, is very relevant that uh, the, the baseline doesn't seem to be flat. It's, uh, for now, it seems to yeah, be. Okay. Yeah. Positive, but it could flip and be negative in the future as well. But it, that'd be interesting to explore, and certainly in terms of how that implies for, for logging scenarios. Uh, okay, any more questions? Uh, if uh, not, uh, I think we can wrap up. So thank you, Plinio. It was fantastic, both uh, both in terms of just your 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 synthesis of your own work, but I think that this synthesis across the whole. Yeah. Tropical managed forest community is a really valuable service uh, as well in, in coordinating. I, I know from my own experience how difficult it is to coordinate these, these networks of multiple collaborators across uh, multiple countries and networks. And there's a huge amount of work and effort that, uh, that uh, isn't often recognized uh, overall. So I think a, a lot of credit to you for, for having managed to co coordinate all, all of that synthesis as well. So thank you. Uh, uh, I, we have a tradition here, if you can uh, unmute your microphones and give our speaker an audible uh, uh, round of applause. You can, just like uh, but, uh, 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 thank you uh, for your contribution, Plinio. And thank, you for, uh, thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure to present. I, I like the comments and the, and the questions, so I will improve my presentation more and more. And um, thank you for the very uh, valuable uh, comments and and. and and questions. It was a pleasure. So if you come to Montpellier, please come to visit us. Yes, I certainly hope to next year. Uh, yeah. but, uh, yeah, soon. Uh, and uh, 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 yes, sir, so everyone will we'll take a break from seminars. We'll kick off in mid-January for the rest of our, our seminar series. But do catch up with this seminar and others on our, on our YouTube. Okay. Thank you. Have, have a have Merry a Christmas weekend. to all. And Merry Christmas, indeed. That's the first time I've said that. And, ha and Happy New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye.